Hey, big family, it's me. Um, I just wanted to say hi uh, again, and I wanted to do a little bit of a introduction to Angie video. So what I mean by that is um, I'm getting to know all of you, but I feel like y'all don't really know me, um, or I realize that you don't you don't know much about me. I haven't really told much about myself. Um, we've talked about our family, we've talked about our farm, we've talked about what we do here, but I haven't said a lot of personal things about me and who I am and what I like to do. So I kind of wanted to do an um, introductory video, I guess, to myself and just kind of let you know a little bit more about Angie and uh, what my talents are, what my likes and dislikes are. So um, I think that I should make kind of a, a short list and, uh, and go through them with you. So I think number one on the list would be something that some of you know about me, some of you don't, but I love to knit. I'm inside by the fireplace and it's one of my cozy little spots that I like to sit down and reflect and think and um, one of my favorite things to do. I do it literally almost every single day and I just love it. It's one of my favorite addictions is knitting. So um, today I just wanted to show you some of my knitting and I wanted to show you some things that I do. So um, I have all the different sizes of needles and all different kinds of needles. I'm probably going to use these big ones. Uh, they're really, really big. <laughs> they're size 17 to kind of show you how to how I do it, how to get started. Just basic knit. Nothing like, whoa, serious, complicated or scary. Hey, Miles. Um, just to show you basically how to cast on and get started with um, regular knits and pearls. So that's basically all knitting is really once you understand the basic concept of knit and purl. And stitches get a little more complicated from there, but not too much. I mean, that's that's pretty much, that's the thing. So, and then there's all different kinds. There's, um, these are plastic and then there's metal. These shiny ones um, are aluminum, sorry, um, some aluminum. And then there's bamboo ones. I love the feel of wood and bamboo. So I have bamboo needles and then um, all different size straight needles, but then there's also double pointed needles. So you see the two points on each end. So double pointed needles and that gets a little more uh, advanced um, when you get into double pointed needles, but it's not hard. It's just a different way of doing it. So you produce a different result. I like I like all of these techniques and I like sitting in my rocking chair, especially in this spot. Like, so this is my favorite comfy, cozy spot and I love knitting. So knitting just, it, it brings me joy. I, it's hard to explain. It's something that I, um, treasure. It's like my peaceful downtime. It, uh, it relaxes me. Um, it's just something that makes me happy and um and i love making i love the satisfaction of actually producing something of making something for people and giving it as gifts and and i don't really care if it like i want it to turn out well but i don't care if it's the most beautiful awesome perfect thing in the world it's handmade it's not meant to be perfect it's meant to be unique and and it doesn't matter so much to me if um people love it and have to have it or if they even wear it it doesn't really matter it's just the fact that I made something for them and I spent time and energy on this and it was handmade and I just wanted to give it to them and just it makes me happy. It's more for me than it is for them, if that makes sense. It's something that I love to do. And I think this is an addiction that will follow me for years. I think this is something that's going to stay with me for the rest of my life. And I've got, I've accumulated an entire like treasure box over here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's my whole big treasure box of different size needles, um, circular needles, which is another thing that we could get into on another video. But like I said, this is just introduction to my knitting and how I do it. Uh, so my little goodie bag of things. I look up patterns. I um, research patterns. I talk to people about patterns. Uh, I've been given some patterns and you just follow the pattern of what it tells you to do and, and it turns somehow magically turns into what you're trying to make. So when you're casting on, that's how you start. You have to cast on. I do a long tail cast on. There are several different types of cast on, but this is the one I do. So you got your yarn, right? Just yarn and needle. And um, I put my yarn over my needle and then I see how that it's hanging over the needle. So I just hold it together with my hand. I've gripped both of the yarns and it's still on the needle. And then I take these two fingers and I go in between the yarn. See how I've separated it? I went in between the yarn and I kind of pulled it apart, but the needle's still on there. I just pulled these two pieces of yarn apart. And then here's kind of the 
the the way that you have to do the tricky part, the hard part, the way that you have to do it. Um, I'm not going to let it slide off. You see how it could slide off of there? I'm not going to let it slide off my needle, but I am going to pull it down. See, I've separated those and I've pulled it down. And then this part, do you see that part where that yarn is wrapped around my thumb? So again, I separated the two pieces of yarn and I kind of lowered this and now it's wrapped around my thumb. So I am going to take this needle that I'm still holding on to. I am going to pick up that off my thumb. And then you see how your first finger is still wrapped in a needle. Uh, after I picked it up off my thumb, I'm going to come this way and take it off my first finger. So let's do that again. So I separated, pulled it down. I grabbed it this way off my thumb. And then this is still on my first finger. So I just kind of went this way. So I went to the, to the right. Yeah, I went to the right to scoop this one up, but I come to the left to scoop that one up. And then you're going to notice one, two, three little wraps there of string. You're going to notice that it wrapped it three times on there. Well, you just release your fingers. You just pull them out. And then you're still holding on to all this. You just pulled your fingers out. You're still holding on to this. So when you pull it, it snugged it up tight. Did you see that? I pulled on this and it snugged it up tight. So now I have my first uh, cast on, if you will. I have my first knit. So then I, I just do it again and that's how I keep going. So with casting on, see if you want to see it a little quicker. So I just, oh, these are much bigger needles. These are a little awkward for my fingers. <laughs> but casting on is just going under the thumb and over the first finger loop. So under thumb loop and oh, thumb loop, first finger loop thumb loop, first finger loop. And as long as, see it's casting on more and more knits, I'm just getting more onto this needle because that's what you're doing. You're putting these cast ons on your needle. Um, so the more I go down, it depends, and some uh, patterns will tell you cast on 30, 60, 100, depending on like what you're making. You might only need to cast on 10 for something tiny and small. But just remember, separate your thread, pull it down, you know, while still holding onto the needle thumb, first finger, voila. Thumb, first finger, let go. And when I say let go, let the fingers go. Don't, don't let go of, you know, all of it. You got, you still got to snug it up tight, but yeah. And then you, you do have to leave yourself enough tail. See, this is my tail. See how it got shorter? got shorter and shorter and shorter. Got to leave yourself enough tail to be able to cast on because if you didn't leave yourself any tail, you're going to run out of tail and you're not going to be able to cast on anymore. So when you're first beginning to get your yarn out, leave yourself a lot of working yarn and a lot of tail yarn on both sides. Leave yourself a lot of room. But that's casting on. I mean, that's, that's how you start and that's pretty basic. But um, the actual knit, the actual act of knitting, is just it's pretty simple too um a basic knit stitch is all i'm going to teach you today so let me adjust the camera just a little bit okay i can see you better hi okay a basic knit stitch so you see how you made these cast ons do you see these little loops and every little stitch every little cast on so the first one on the needle come to the very first one here's your working hand they're gonna stick it up through the first loop so you get it into there. See how I pushed it up through? So I kind of shoved it into that first loop. Push it in. Now make sure that you grab your working yarn, not your tail. See the little tail? Grab the working yarn. Because if you mistakenly grab the tail, it's not going to work out. Grab the working yarn. While you're still holding that needle that has shoved through the first stitch, grab your working yarn, rope it around through the middle. See, I went through the middle of the needles. I put it in the middle. And then while you're still holding them together, this needle that you shoved through is going to go down and under that first stitch, down and through. And then once you've gone down and through, you're going to shove it off the tip of this other needle. And you have your first stitch. So I just stitched one needle from this needle 
to I stitched one stitch from this needle to this needle. So that was one. I try it again. So shove it up through and then grab working yarn, not tail, grab working yarn. Go through the middle of the needles and then down through the back of that loop that is still on it. And now you got all this mess on this needle, but you're just going to shove it off the tip of that needle. Now you've got two stitches. So if you want to see what that looks like in actual working time, I just start knitting. I just go through, I just go up and around and under and off, up and around and under and off. And that's just kind of what you do over and over until you get to the end. So this is knitting one row. So I'm just kind of fast knitting with these huge needles. I've actually never worked with size 17 before. I bought them randomly at Hobby Lobby <laughs> and I thought that was so cool. And I said, one day I'm going to need really large needles to do some kind of cool, um, unique project. And so I, and they were on sale. They were like a dollar or two. So I got these size 17 needles and <clears throat> size 17 needles. And I was like, uh, this is cool just to have, you know, I just love these huge needles. I'm used to working with teeny tiny needles, but that is a knitted row. See how it created a row? So I'm making something already. And the more rows you do, the more of these rows that you do, you knit, 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 turn it around, knit, 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 turn it around, knit, 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 knit. So the more you flip it around and keep knitting back and forth, the more uh, material you're gonna make and it's gonna get longer and longer and longer and you're gonna create something. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's basic knitting. I mean, there's, there's purling and there's other types of, uh, of stitches that you can learn, you know, there's other types of uh, uh, patterns that it goes in, garter stitch and um, kitchenette stitch and all these other different terms and stitches that you can learn. But if you just YouTube it, if you just Google it, it's not actually hard, it's, it's good. So it's something that I love. Like I said, I do it every day. I enjoy it. I, I love all the intricate patterns and things that you can do in designs and colors that you can match together and it's just, I'm not necessarily a crafty person, so this is my craft. This is something I love to do, and I always will. Number two on the list, uh, something kind of uh, crazy about me. I pride myself on being probably the strongest woman my age that I know. I'm pretty strong. I can lift a lot of things. I do a lot of hard work. I try to do self-care. I try to exercise and take care of myself. And I try to make sure that my muscles and bones are healthy and strong. And I try to treat myself well because I want to be able to be capable on this homestead and on this farm. I want to be able to lift things. I want to be physically strong. So I like the fact that I can do things and that I'm not like, uh, I'm not a weakling. I, I, you know, I can hold my own. I can pull my own weight, you know, up to a certain point, I make sure I'm safe and I make sure I don't hurt myself, but I can actually contribute, you know, and I'm, I'm one of the stronger women that I know. So I like that. I like being a strong gal. I bet you didn't know that I am pretty talented at acrobatics. <laughs> not all acrobatics, like I'm not a gymnast or anything, but I'm pretty flexible and I can do some, some tricks and I can do a round off. I can do a headstand. I can uh, do some pretty uh, bendy flexy things. And um, like I was talking about the self care, well, I like to take care of myself. I like to do yoga. I like to walk. Um, I used to run a lot. I used to swim a lot. Physical exercise has been a part of my life for many, many years. I was on the dance team in high school. Um, I just, I'm a very active person. Uh, I love to stay physically active. I love to take care of myself, but I also love to like dance and move around and, and do different uh, 
gymnastic sort of tricks and bends and flips and things so it's just something I enjoy it's something I play around with so and it's always a, a, a fun conversation starter and um, taking my daughters to dances they go to church dances and church events and it's always fun to go with them because their mama is not afraid to bust a move on the dance floor <laughs> Something that you probably didn't know about me is that I play the violin. Uh, I do. I, um, I'm not, again, I'm not like proficient. This is not some expert thing that I've been doing for years and years. No, I picked up the violin just uh, maybe maybe two years back and uh, I've been kind of playing around with it. I'm just um, kind of self-taught uh, and I just I mostly love to play Christmas songs uh, on it, but I do know also spiritual songs, church songs, um, basic, regular beginner songs. Like, I, I'm, I'm okay. I mean, it sounds, depending on the day and depending on if I'm nervous or shaky or uh, depending on uh, just if I'm having a good day or not, it'll, um, it'll sound scratchy or it'll sound like it flows really well. But I like it. I just love the sound of the violin. That's an instrument that has always interested me and an instrument that I've always just adored the sound of. Um, and I, I just wanted to, to play it and I never played it when I was little. So I was like, now that I'm an adult and I can get things, you know, for myself and I can teach myself things, um, why not teach myself how to play the violin? So I just picked it up one day, started researching, started learning, bought myself a songbook and printed out some music and I just started doing it. So now I just, uh, I like it. That's something I'm probably going to keep practicing and keep going with. And I'm just hoping to get better and better as time goes on. So please don't, don't be mean. Please be kind. Don't judge me. I'm not a proficient violinist. I just kind of piddle with it. I just picked it up and started playing some songs on it. But it is something that is special to me and something that I like. <laughs> Another talent, if you will, I guess this is not like anything, you know, huge. Uh, it is important. It's not something, you know, that a lot of people um, don't have in their life. I bet lots of you can do this, but I have a particular affinity, shall we say, for finding things. I'm the finder of the home. I'm like the investigator. I'm the mystery solver. If anybody loses anything, they say, mom, where is this? And I, I almost always, 99% of the time, I can rattle off where that thing is, where I've seen it, where they last put it. I seem to keep up with everything for everybody else. Now, do I myself misplace things? Of course, everybody does. Um, I don't often do that though. I do love to know where everything is. I'm one of those people where everything has a place. When I wanna find something, I wanna know where it is. So that's the thing about me. I am a finder. I am a go get it and find it person. And even if I've never seen it before or don't have a clue where you put it, if you tell me to go find something, I can usually find it. I'm, I'm a pretty, I'm pretty good at that. I have a talent. You can ask my husband <laughs> and my kids, you know, they uh, are notorious for anything that they put in their hands. They, three seconds later, they will set it down somewhere and walk off and not remember where they set it. They, they have a true talent for misplacing things, <laughs> but that works perfectly because I have a true talent for finding things. So I love to find things and put them back in the place where they belong. So I'm a good, finder and mystery solver which you kind of have to be as a mom and as a woman on the homestead you kind of have to be uh you have to be an investigator you have to be a a, a sherlock holmes <laughs> you become a mystery solver real quick <laughs> and you start to find where everything is because you notice that you need things and you have to know where they are so you get good at it real quick 
Another thing that I really like to do that is, um, it's a it's a personal thing. It's uh, I don't want to say it's a talent because I'm not hugely and particularly talented at it, I don't think, but I do love to sing. Um, I love to sing by myself. I sing in the shower. I sing all day long. I sing while I'm working. I just, song is a part of me. Music is a part of me. I know so many songs and I just, uh, I sing them out loud. Um, not afraid to sing in front of people. I, I do. I love to sing. Um, my family also is <laughs> prone to burst out in song at any random moment and they all love to sing songs. So, um, yeah, me and my family just, we love it. Singing and music is a, is a true part of our spirit and it's a part of our family and it's just something that we will have a joy and a love for probably forever. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the beauty of the earth. Let's go. Come on. Wow. Come on, y'all. <laughs> For the beauty of each hour of the day and of the night. Hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. So that's pretty much me in, in a nutshell as far as like what I like to do and my hobbies and my interests and my activities. That's pretty much what I got going on every day besides the homestead and the busy mama life and being a wife and keeping up with church activities and social life and all the other things that life has in it. Other than that, my hobbies uh, are those. My hobbies are musical, my hobbies are physical, my hobbies are spiritual, my hobbies are fun and self-care and um, yeah, and I just I take care of myself and I do what I like. And that's a little bit more about me, so I'm glad you got to know me a little bit better.